Right guys, back by popular demand. It's been a while since the last video. Uh, we've got this new project to introduce to the channel. This is an Arden Blue Astra GSI, as you can tell. Now, this car is 500 plus horsepower, which is what has dyno that on a dyno, which I will tell you about in a bit. It's done 179, 180 mile an hour in a standard mile. On its old spec gearbox it's got a longer ratio gearbox on it now this is uh, a car that we've just picked up uh, it's my mate alex's car so we've got a little project to get on with uh, a little bit of fun uh, we've got a lot of tidying to do and it. it's a bit of a mess at the minute uh, the previous owner uh, had it sitting around for quite a long time so we're just going to recommission it bring it up to good spec so we're going to run you around the spec list of it now you can see it's pretty clean pretty straight got a lot of mods on it uh, we're going to stick it on the dyno in the future just to show what power it actually is so as i just mentioned the car has been sitting for a long time and it has got a bit messy in that time um and it needs a lot of issues sorting out if you look at it up close especially this bumper it is a new bumper but it's got no clear coat on it it's been you know you've got rust build up you know it's not fitting properly you can see here uh things like you know state of the brembos just silly stuff don't like these focus rs vents they've got to go i'm going to show you the uh engine bay now very very messy but big turbo setup i'll run you through the engine spec you can see here gen 1 gtx 28 on there lovely manifold i've not seen the manifold uh like this before it's almost like a long runner one it isn't quite but very nice manifold that is it's not off the shelf nice big front mount intercooler on there about to trim back the bumper to fit just silly things like even the uh cupra split is just cable tied on wiring everywhere look just dangling around hoses just dangling around one of the biggest problems with the car as you see from the thumbnail this should be illegal this car has been mapped without a math setup you can see it normally runs a 90 mil math setup now it did have a math in it and it went to a certain tuner up north i'm not going to name any names because i'm i'm not into that but basically it doesn't have a cold start this car doesn't have a cold start it's unbelievable like it should not be allowed to leave a tuner with the warm-up setup that it's got on it in a minute we're going to do a quick sand clip of how hard this is to get this car to warm up from cold now this ain't a full race car this is a road car it should have a cold start setup where you can literally just turn the car on and let it idle that is not the case with this car let me do some sand clips you'll see how horrendous it is right so we're going to get this car started up now there's no throttle response from this pedal below three and a half thousand rpm when it's cold uh, to try and keep this thing idling as soon as you let off the throttle it will die Right, this car's stone cold right now, so not been started in days. Let's try to get this thing started up. This is how it's been left. See, so now you're having to press the throttle input to try and get this thing started. Ridiculous. This is how it's been left. So there's no throttle, as you can see there. Got the car started, no throttle. Have to go again. Alright. Now the car is started now. Now it wants to die again, as you can tell. As soon as you let off the throttle, it wants to die. So, start it up. Hear that? Massively overfueling. Load map is all over the place. Um, I cannot believe it's a lad out of a tuning garage to be able to run like that and someone has paid for that and that's a service. So second time, trying to get it started. It's obviously a little bit warmer now. You can hear it misfiring, spluttering. No throttle response still. Now we'll warm up obviously and start hiding it on its own. It's 
So you can see they're starting to warm up now. Right, let off the throttle. Right, so it's just started idling on its own, as you can see there. It took that much to warm the car up. So we're gonna have to do something about that, whether we get a new map on it or not. Imagine having to try and warm that up on a winter's evening when you want to go out. A little rev. As soon as you give it a bit of a rev, even when it's idling on its own, it still ain't up to temperature, I die straight away. Leave in the comments section what you think about that cold map and what you'd think if that was your car that left the tuning garage like that. Let me know in the comments section. <laughs> So even with the car slightly up the temperature now, obviously ain't reading on the gauges still because it's only been just been started up. Look at the AFRs on idle. Now that should be around high 14s, low 15s maximum. And while you're cruising, sometimes that will go, as you can see there, it will go off of the 18 AFR scale. That is way, way, way too lean. You know, it needs some fuel put in that. Also, you have to deal with no traction control, no cruise control. So obviously the cruise control on these stalks here don't have any of that. So you've got no traction control, no cruise control, crazy cold start, all been turned off. I had all in at like barely any fuel in there, that's just basically running on air. Right, let's run you through a quick spec list of the car. Nothing crazy, nice built engine, nice spec engine. Um, as I say, this has dynoed at 500 horsepower, but the dyno that it was dynoed on is the same dyno who done obviously the map in and the cold start map, and their dyno overreads, uh, it's just, it's a known fact. Uh, I don't, I've been out in this car, there's no way it's 505 horsepower, whatever it rolled on the dyno. Uh, I'm guessing around mid 400s, but we will find out because we will put this on a dyno exactly as it is, not touched from when it went on the dyno last. Um, let me run you through the spec of the engine quickly. So, you can see in here we've got vernier pulleys in there. The engine is a wedged Z20 let block with Wozna 86 and a half mil pistons. Yeah, it's got steel forged rods, um, race bearings, stock crank. Uh, the head is ported, no valves, just ported, stock valves. Uh, semi race lift cams, uh, hydraulic lifters, no solid lifters on this. Um, it's got Piper valve springs, as you can see. We have a GT28, well it's actually a GTX2871 Gen 1, so ball bearing turbo. Lovely manifold, as I said previously. Really nice setup, that manifold, I do like it. The turbo itself has a tile V-band setup, as you can see down there. Nice stainless exhaust has in. Uh, you've got the heat shields and that on the water pipes, which is nice, so that's been done properly. Nice Murray clamps, really like them. I love this little bit of uh, breather hosing as well. These come out a long time ago and they really, really look good. Uh, all the stainless, oh, sorry, aluminium piping has been done custom. You see you've got a top hat there, stainless top hat. Murray clamps, nicely done. Uh, a lot of nicely done bits on it. Three bar map sensor. Um, ECU can't read that far, but it's obviously been modified to read that map sensor. You've got a turbo smart wastegate. Uh, I think this one's a 40 mil on this one. Uh, it's got a screamer pipe, which you will hear in some sand clips. Uh, got AFR gauge in there as well. You can see the custom intercooler at the front here, nice and thick, really nice cooler. Uh, we will show you that when the bumper's off, in, maybe in this episode, in another episode, don't know yet. Uh, aluminium rad with fans on the back, which I don't agree with, obviously up against the manifold. I like to push the rad back, add the fans on the front, that will be changed. 90 mil math sensor well it's, <laughs> it did have a math sensor in it but it's a 90 mil pipe nicely made as well uh, it wasn't on very tight when we got it this clip wasn't on there air filter was tiny uh, breather hose you can see it's got this external breather ain't very good <laughs> basically just pops off like that we've got a fuel pressure sensor on here which is a very good idea it can save your engine you know for pump dies if you're running twin pumps whatever uh, i'll show you the fuel setup on this car we've got a gripper diff in the gearbox this has a uh, z20 let first and second then third fourth fifth is diesel which is a lot longer because this is used for top speed runs this car it will do on that gearbox over 180 to maybe 190 mile an hour um, with 
the longer ratios than it did before. As I said, it's done 179 mile an hour on the previous gearbox and the standing start. So let's show you in the boot, with the setup in the boot. Nice setup, got some nice bits. You can see here, we have a swell pot system in here and um, it's got a fuel pump in there, it's a Bosch 044. We've got to pick up 340 litre per hour pump in the tank, runs to this swell pot setup. And you can see it's actually been really nicely done. So that's been installed nicely, which I'm pleased about. Then fuel lines go all the way down underneath the car. Don't like the fact that we have a battery in the boot with, well, we ain't even clamped down. So it's got no clamp on it. It's just uh, glued down at the minute. Meth pump, fuel tank, basically, fuel setup. Meth tank, <laughs> got a, few, a fire extinguisher that's in the boot. That's no good, is it? If there's a fire in the boot, what are you gonna do with a fire extinguisher? You're gonna, you won't be able to get that out. We've got a battery, fuel, meth, not a good combination. So that battery is gonna be going to the front. Uh, there's no battery bracket at the minute, so we're gonna have to get a new one for that, a new battery tray and get that in. Bit of relocator in because this is for the pump for the meth. So that's gonna be have to move to either move to the front or I'm gonna have to send a power line from the front to the back. No problems with that. Nice setup though, other than the battery. Uh, as you can see though, it is running meth. So one problem with uh, these cars, if you put a battery in the boot, if you don't use the right, um, well, you can see here, it's not that great. If you don't use the right connectors and stuff, the battery will uh, find it hard to start the car and it will be slow starting. Also, this is like power cable made for subs and amps and you know, sound systems. It isn't battery cable. That goes underneath the car and these fuel lines are actually cable tied to it. Not a great idea. That always needs to be sorted out. So as I say, it's going to be all relocated and that's going to go to the front. Like silly little things here like the meth tank. I mean, this strap here is for the first aid kit <laughs> and it's been cable tied to that. You can see meth tank is probably, I think it's only bolted in by two bolts down here. Just loads of things need to be sorted out on it. I'm really not happy about this. I mean, if that cover come off, would you see how easy that was? And that touched earth with all that fuel, you know, there's fuel tank here, meth pump, meth tank, um, fire extinguisher that's in the boot that there's no good if the car's on fire, is it really? And that's not gonna do much anyway, this little thing. Exterior wise, so we've got some team dynamics in grey, as you can see here, they're only seven J's, they're not seven and a half, which uh, if you're gonna ever buy a team dynamics for these cars, stock width for these cars is seven and a half J, so don't go seven J, because it's uh, smaller than the original. VXR brakes on the rear, nice upgrade that is, about 15 mil, 18 mil bigger than the stock GSIs. Nice straight car, you can see all the original GSI body kit. See here, original GSI interior, nice and clean. Don't look like it's done the mileage of the actual car. You've got some gauges in here to tell us everything we need to know. Uh, you've got a boost gauge up there. It's got a peak function so we can actually see what boost it's running on peak. We can reset that. AFR, extremely important to know that. Uh, down here, oil pressure, oil temperature, and fuel pressure. So this is the one where we've got the fuel pressure sensor in the line. Um, very good gauges to have. Short shifting gear knob as usual, no stereo in this. That had a scan gauge in it, so that's got to be replaced. You can see that had that cut in, that's been removed. So on the front, we have obviously the same TDs. 88 R's all ran, nice uh, grippy tire. Brembo setup, so we've got VXR discs on the front, Brembo with the adapters, as you've seen in previous videos of mine. These Brembo's have PBS pads in them and uh, they're very good. This car does stop very well, even though it has been sitting for a long time. You can see it had some pickup. Um, them pads are very good. Anyone use PBS pads knows that they're a great, great item. Right, so underneath the car, we've got the usual. You can see obviously we've got a tiny little back box in. It's doing no silencing really at all. That's why the car is so loud. We have gas coilovers on the front with shocks and adjustable shocks and adjustable springs on the rear, you can see here. Uh, also got a white line rear anti-roll bar and white line camber shims that are in the hub. Really do make a difference on the rear of this car. Car handles really, really nicely. See it's pretty clean under here. Obviously it needs a clean up, but there's no rust, no corrosion. Uh, rear beam has poly bushes, so the whole rear end is pretty much done. It, all it could benefit from really is some braided lines from the rear brakes. Right, so the front shocks are gas golds with pillar ball top mounts. So obviously when we jack the car up, I'll be able to show you them a little bit better. These hold the top mounts precisely in position. And it's one of the reasons that this car handles so nicely um, because on the normal uh, setups on the top mounts of these cars, this top mount will move around 
and uh, it allows for a lot of flexibility in the top mount. This holds it nicely and solidly in place so there's no movement. You see here battery reloc relocation has been done as I said to you uh, on the back and this is the setup that it's on the front. It's not too bad. It's bolted in place, that's safe. Um, one of the unfortunate factors is they'd cut the battery bracket here which is, I don't know really know why because there's no really need for it. So we're gonna have to uh, spot weld another one in and we've got one in coming and then we have to get a battery tray in there bolt it in make that look a lot tidier all this wiring is going to be tidy up as you know it's going to be tidied we've got vibrotechnics mounts all round. you can see here solid mounts got one there um, it's polybush down there and then we've got the one down the rear so this is the front setup on the car you can see we've got nice brembos on here to get this car stop in some spaces on the front because the offset of the wheels don't clear these big brembos you see they've got they come out quite far i've got braided brake lines gas golds um, subframe is solid bushed the um, wishbones are not poly bushed but they are brand new brand new tie rods in and out um, so you've got three inch v-band exhaust system under here with afr gauge bungs you see the naughty little screamer coming out of here nice um, bone dry under here no oil leaks at all as a zlet should be vibrotechnics mount here you can see all these aluminium uh, boost hoses have all been custom made uh, some powder coat stuff under here and we have an oil cooler just tucked up in the rear you can see with the line the water to oil cooler has been removed and you can see here we've got an air to oil cooler that's been tucked in there it needs some airflow going to it because there's not really any airflow so we're gonna have to put some duct into that fuel system wires we've got thousand cc injectors down there you can't really see them they're bosch 1000s just about to see down there and you can tell here we've got a class and intake it's a genuine class and intake probably says it somewhere on it uh, this ain't low, like a pattern part one it's actually a genuine one um, normally i run eds's this makes it a little bit more talky mid-range um, rev limit on this car is only seven and a half thousand anyway it's not like a high revving eight thousand solid lifter engine so not too bad makes it nice one of the things we've got to sort out right now we're going to get on with is because obviously the cold star you can't smell this this is smell vision <laughs> but you can't smell that that stinks of fuel oil's got to be drained out of that it's uh the cold starts obviously horrendous as you see so the fuel is basically getting into the oil and it's contaminating it so we're going to drain the oil out got to check what plugs is in this because their the plugs are very old in it can tell uh so i need to see if they're iridium eights nines need to see so we can order some plugs for it uh, so we're going to pull them out drop the oil show you the state of this oil So I wanted to use a nice fresh clear container so you can actually see the oil in it you can see what I'm talking about so we're gonna let that drain out for a bit get the oil filter off get some fresh oil in there right nice fresh oil filter in there GM1 or as they say now PSA um, so the oil you can see how black it is and it stinks of fuel so sitting here right now I can smell the amount of fuel that's in it so fresh oil in it and it should be good to go Well, another thing to add to the list. So we just pulled the plugs out of the car so we can see what plugs they're actually running in there. They're grade eights, but they are just a cheap type NGK copper plug at the minute. BCR AESs, um, not a great plug. They've been in there a long time. And as you can see here, they've been gapped very, very closely now. I just measured the gap with um, my feeler gauges and the gap is 0.5 which is way too close for these plugs never run them any even if you're running three bar boost you shouldn't run them any closer than a six um, you really want a big gap as possible basically without spark blowout I'm going to change these plugs out for a much much better plug and the car will run a lot better 